All right, so today I looked at my ball python egg incubator, and believe it or not, I actually have my very first clutch of ball python eggs that are starting to hatch. And this is kind of an interesting clutch. It was actually laid like two months before most of my ball pythons even start laying. I couldn't believe it. I just kind of randomly went through my collection and just happened to find some, a surprise clutch of eggs from this female. And believe it or not, it's actually been two months in the incubator and I still don't have any eggs from any of my other females. I don't know if this was like just kind of a one-off where they bred really quick at the very beginning or if it was actually a carryover from the previous year and the, fr the previous year I actually used the same male so no matter what we'll actually get the same results from this so what I want to do is I want to pull those out of the incubator I saw one little head just sticking out of an egg so I know they're ready to cut we can actually cut them open a little bit and peek inside and see what the results are all right, so here's my snake egg incubator that I built out of a beverage cooler. And there's actually quite a few eggs in here. These are all laid by my reticulated python. Lucy laid a huge clutch of eggs. I actually have 37 retic eggs that are good and in there. She laid over 50 eggs, but some of them were infertile, which was kind of interesting. So I ended up with 37. Those, those will actually hatch in about a month, which is pretty awesome. Then I just have the one clutch, just one random stray clutch of bulb python eggs right on the top so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that box out then we'll take a look at what's inside all right so here's the box this pairing was actually a cross between an albino pied crossed with an albino so they all should be albinos 100% het pied it was actually laid on the 12th of February which is unbelievable I can't believe I was getting eggs in February totally unexpected and right towards the end, the last month or so, I'd say I completely sealed the top of this. So what I want to do is just kind of peel this back a little bit here. Take a look at those. Pretty awesome. These actually dried out a little too much during the first part of the incubation process. And then I sealed them up to give them a little extra humidity towards the end. That's why they're kind of shrunken in. They usually aren't shrunken in that much. But looks pretty good from what I see. I actually see three albinos so far, which is pretty good. So we, I've actually done this pairing before, so I didn't actually get any albino pied visuals. So I'm pretty sure that that one is not het for pied. But take a look at that. Ah, cute little face right there. That's pretty cute. It's kind of sticking out. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we have. I'm just gonna, I'm running out of paper towels here. This might get kind of messy. I have to grab another roll here. But I'm just gonna cut this open. We'll take a sneak peek inside. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I like to use these big blunt scissors. Uh, some people use really small ones. Alright, let's see what we have. It looks like a beautiful albino. I absolutely love these albinos. Take a look at that. That is pretty awesome. Albino, I think they're, what I'm looking for now is I'm pretty sure they're all albinos, 100% head pies. I just want to make sure there's, if there's twins or if there's any DOAs is what I'm really looking for in these. Or like any runts or anything like that. Seems like with the albino, sometimes you can get like birth defects in some of your albinos, which is kind of unfortunate. But these are looking great. Take a look at that. That's a beauty right there. Let's see if I can bring a light over a little bit closer. That's a good looking, good looking albino right there. Kind of peeking out. <laughs> That's pretty cute. All right, two albinos. Still don't know the males and the females. We won't know that until after they eat a few meals and I probe them. All right, let's take a look at this one. All 
This one is kind of interesting. Looking good, looking good. He's alive. That one's looking great. All right, three albinos alive. <laughs> All right, we have two that aren't open yet, so let's take a look at these. So, uh, let's see. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pinch them a little bit and then cut the tops off. This one's looking great. Man, I love albinos. They're not really that expensive, but they are absolutely beautiful. Definitely one of my favorite just standalone morphs. The bamboos and the albinos are probably two of my favorites. This guy's, let's see if he's alive, moving around a little bit. I think so, yeah, looks good. He's got his head kind of buried in there. Looking good, looking good. All right, so that is uh, four albinos. Four that are alive, as far as I can tell. This one seems really sunken in and really small, so I'm not sure about this one. This could be the big question mark right here. Oh. I don't know about this guy. Hmm. Oh, he's moving. He's moving. <laughs> All right. He's uh, at first. I thought. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh no. Oh. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Take a look at that. Speaking of birth defects. Take a look at the head on that one no eyes no eyes it's an eye neither one of the eyes had formed I've never seen that at all ever in my collection wow it's an eyeless albino how crazy is that no eyes uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Huh. Wow. I don't even know what to do with that one. I guess we're going to have an eyeless snake. Uh, maybe I should check the eyes on the other ones. This one's got good eyes. Wow. I can't believe it. Uh... It's the first time I've seen that. That one, I don't want to pull them out, but this guy looks like he's got good eyes. That's pretty unfortunate. This guy's got some good eyes. Wow. Oh, that's the weirdest thing that I have ever seen. Take a look at that. Completely eyeless. Crazy. All right, so there you have it. I got one really weird. You always see it's a. It's like every time you think it's gonna be just a regular routine, you know what it's gonna be. Uh, something weird always pops out. It's just unbelievable. So there you have it. I got an eyeless ball python with no eyes. That might be kind of tricky trying to feed that guy because he can't see what he's eating. Hopefully, if he actually survives coming out of this egg. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave them in the incubator for a little bit more until they completely come out. And then once they come out of the incubator, I'll set them up in the hatchling rack. I still have 10 snakes from last year that I haven't sold yet. It's so early. It's like, it's like two months before I normally even think about hatchlings. Which is kind of crazy. Even even eggs. I don't have any eggs yet. So when the eggs start rolling in, usually the first hatchlings don't even show up for two months. So that's really weird. 
Uh, yeah, I've actually had some weird genetic defects with some of these albinos. Usually it's like a, a genetic defect where they have like severe kinks and they can't get out of the egg. They die in the egg. They get all like bound up, just kind of deformed in the egg. They like partially develop and they die. But I've never seen one fully developed with no eyes, so that's a first for me. Alright, so there you have it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.